Hi, I'm Ed Sperling. I'm the Editor-in-Chief of Semiconductor Engineering. I'm over to Chronix with Mike Fitton, who's going to talk to, today about the very vague and changing concept called the edge. Mike, you think back to the days of the, the introduction of the IoT, it was a sort of a vague concept. The edge has is, is vague too, but it's starting to develop a bit. Where do you see the, the changes going and, and what's changing from your standpoint? Yeah, that's a great question. There's still a lot of uncertainty about the edge, but definitely there's some characteristics that are starting to emerge. What we're seeing is the huge wide variety of different types of devices, you know, every different kind of application that you can see. Also an increase in the number of devices that are coming. And then finally, uh, a variety in, from sensors that produce very, very little data to other things that are producing significant amount of data. So different characteristics as well. Is a lot of what's changing at the edge being driven by the fact that we have so many more sensors producing uh, streaming data, for example, and streaming audio that we couldn't possibly process it all in uh, sending it all to the cloud and waiting for it to come back? Yeah, that's a very interesting characteristic that we're seeing, that classically we had the edge devices, the IoT, and all that data was coming back to a central cloud location. But what we're seeing, because of the requirements from a latency point of view, but also because of the, the reducing the bandwidth, we're starting to push that processing closer to the edge. And so this is where we get this concept of edge analytics or edge compute. Why don't you draw this out for us? Sure. So what are we looking at here, Mike? This is the, the classic data center to uh, edge device type of uh, model, but it's shifting now, right? Exactly correct. So this is the very classic model that we see here. We've got a large number of connections that are occurring back, that are going back to, to a, a data center, at least in the classic sense. The challenge that we have here is if you look, for example, at some of the things associated with autonomous driving, that's a huge amount of bandwidth associated with that. So that's really driving this backhaul connectivity too high in terms of the bandwidth. The other challenge that we have is the latency restriction of this, of a decision being made back here in the cloud and then communicated back, just takes too long. And more often what we will want to do is see communication between these devices to maximize the efficiency and the safety of what's happening. There is no architecture that owns that space in between the cloud and the edge device, right? Which is also partly considered the edge. I think people are starting to divide it up into edge servers or yeah, edge so cloud. Where we will start to see edge servers will be in this kind of central area where we might have some more kind of edge analytics or edge compute, where you would have something that could be deployed right at the edge of the network. It could be uh, within a base station or very close to where the data is being produced. And you would likely have more of these edge boxes that are doing different parts of processing. And then the other area that might occur is there might also be some kind of IoT or sensor aggregation layer where you're seeing the fusion or aggregation of more pieces of data coming together that is then communicated back to this um, edge compute resource. You need a lot of intelligence to be able to parse up this data though, don't you? You need to be able to say, okay, this has to be processed locally, this can be processed in the cloud, um, this needs to be uh, looked at on mass across lots of different uh, servers and is never going to be done locally. Yeah, exactly correct. So the, the idea is to push the decisions down here because what that does is that reduces your bandwidth and reduces your latency because you're making a decision m much faster than you were before. But that means this is a compute resource now. This is really just a data center just deployed in a different space. And so that m means that it needs the same kind of requirements that we were seeing here in the data center. So um, we kind of think of it as like three different pillars about what's required. One is about the data movement. You know, how do you get the data to the processing resource and away? Second is about the data storage. How do you efficiently keep the data? And then the final one is the data processing. In order to, to do this, you need some fairly sophisticated understanding about what, what gets processed, where, um, what gets moved to the cloud. That's a fairly in, compute intensive type of resource, isn't it? Yeah, that's correct. So you would see probably the same kind of processing occurring here as occurring in the edge compute resource that we have. So the same type of inference algorithms, for example, are being uh, performed for machine learning. The key difference between these two is in this area, the, the performance per watt is, is really the key metric. Whereas if you look here in the data center, you're much more interested in what the maximum performance you can get is. And so this may change the kind of deployment model that you'll need to start have something that's more power efficient as well as being flexible if you're looking at this kind of edge compute acceleration function. 
If you think about what's going on in the data center, that's pretty much constantly in flux with algorithms that are changing all the time. When you're moving down into the next layer, which is the edge cloud, nobody's even defined the architecture there yet, right? Uh, exactly correct. So that, again, for um, what we see here from an FPGA applicability point of view, FPGAs are great at being reprogrammed for different workloads here in the data center. That would be like a PCIe acceleration card. You could have the same kind of deployment here in a, in a, in a box at the edge. Again, FPGA is acting as a flexible, reprogrammable workload accelerator in that case. But even down here in the IoT aggregation layer, you could be doing some aggregation and some pre-processing there to reduce the amount of bandwidth that you have to take back. What actually is the decision maker of where you process this? Do you process it at the edge, which is basically a battery device a lot of times, or do you do go all the way to the cloud? Yeah, I, I think it's a great question, and there's a variety of different answers. My view is it really comes down to how much power can you accommodate at each of the different four levels we've got here. And you really do as much processing as low as you can within a certain power and thermal envelope. So you could, if you did all your processing at the edge, that would be awesome from a latency point of view and reducing your bandwidth, but you would chew through your battery life immediately. So what you really want to do is do the, the acceptable amount of processing to minimize that bandwidth. So then we go back to the next level. Let's, let's say this aggregation level that has then probably got mains power, but you may have some kind of thermal constraint. It could be a, in a box at the end of the street if it's in a cable TV uh, deployment model. So in that case, you're then more constrained from a thermals point of view. So that's when this teraops per watt, the performance per watt becomes a key metric. I've only got a certain thermal dissipation that I can accommodate. I'm trying to get as much processing push to the edge as possible. Some of that will then become back to this data center that's deployed at the edge. And that's particularly useful about when we're trying to minimize the latency for very latency sensitive applications like autonomous vehicles. And then you get left with the other stuff, which isn't latency sensitive, you've reduced the bandwidth it, it, then you can try and process it offline and anything like that will go back to this data center here. You've already got some fundamental shifts going on here, one of which is if you're doing all this processing at the edge, these devices are always on as opposed to being used intermittently. In addition, you have the other aspect of this of you have to send it somewhere, so you're I.O. intensive at that point. You're pushing the data from uh, whatever the device is up to whatever you're, wherever you want the processing to be done. How does that change the dynamics here? It really kind of coalesces the requirements I talked about earlier on that we've seen elsewhere in other application areas. You know, classically with the uh, networking and, um, and terabit switching, we've seen the need for, for, for wide bandwidth Ethernet. Well, as you get higher and higher up here, we have that networking and data movement challenge. You also see the requirement for data storage that I talked about, the fact that you need to be able to efficiently store some data locally to where you're doing the processing. That could be the weights for your machine learning algorithm and the activation function. How do you store that in an external memory that's close to the device where it's going to be doing the processing and has a, a minimum amount of power associated with that movement? And then finally, in terms of the data processing, the data processing needs to be both flexible but as low power as possible. And the lower power it is, the further we can push it down towards the edge, which is maximizing the um, efficiency of the, of the overall network and also reducing our latency. And we're looking at this from a uh, simplistic standpoint here of, of three different levels, right? Because this is really probably going to be a spectrum of things. That's correct. There's actually a continuum rather than the way I've quantized it here. But it's a useful way to think about this stuff because you can imagine a deployment model here that could be um, CPUs, perhaps with some kind of reprogrammable acceleration on a PCIe card. As you get to this deployment at the edge, you can have something similar, but it's much more likely to be power constrained or thermally constrained which was likely to move more things to some kind of more power efficient accelerator like an FPGA. And there's a couple other knobs that you can turn here too, right? So you can be at the edge and do lower precision and then do finer uh, grain precision as you go forward. You can also do sparsity in the algorithms and, and take out certain things that you don't need. Yeah, that's absolutely true. And, and that's kind of, I would say that if you're looking at machine learning here towards the edge, in that case, machine learning isn't all about machine learning. So it's not just about the very efficient matrix vector math that you can do. There's also other things that you can exploit in that case. You said about sparsity. That's where if you've got a number of samples, let's say nine out of the 10 samples are zeros, you only really need to sample the non-zero value. You only need to process that. So you want to be able to compress the data. You might want to change the data format in that it might come in in one format and you would want to to get all the formats to be the same, or even reducing the resolution 
to make the processing easier. And the final area as well is, is you need to aggregate all of this data together. So you might have some timing associated with that. So you have some sensor fusion. So those are areas of sensor fusion, of compressing the data and changing the number format. There are additional types of processing that are likely to need to occur here, either here in the uh, aggregation layer or here in the edge compute layer. So stepping up to 60,000 feet and looking at this, what we've really done is we've taken what used to be uh, the idea of pervasive computing and distributed computing, and now we've added a granularity level level into this and multiple gr layers of granularity that we didn't have before, right? Yeah, that's correct. So it's, uh, it's the same compute paradigm in terms of the functions that are being done, but the deployment models are very different. And so that's why you see a wide variety of different solutions for performing something like machine learning as it comes to the edge. You can have dedicated inference engines that are optimized for 8-bit integer. You can have more flexible FPGA or embedded FPGA. Um, you can have CPUs or GPUs, although more likely the CPUs and GPUs will be closer to the data center just because of them being relatively less efficient for a power consumption point of view. Mike, this is a very interesting and evolving space. Thanks for a great explanation. Thanks for a great discussion.